good evening and welcome back to our series on going over the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. This evening we will be in the spiritual works of mercy and probably one of the two hardest of the spiritual works of mercy to accomplish, forgiving willingly. Now in that is a very tied up different little thing because one is the willingness aspect but also the idea of forgiveness to begin with. I think it's almost human nature, it seems. The more I have been a priest, the more I've been around people in general, the idea of forgiving or not to forgive. And I think our human nature to some degree leans toward the non-forgiving aspect. We would rather hold a grudge. We would rather hold on to the anger of something that has happened to us. And I think it's done out of an out in a poorly minded idea that if I forgive the person they've gotten away with it. If I have forgiven the person then everything reverts back to the way it was before and I can't allow that to happen. A couple of things to remember the event has been done there is nothing we can do to make it go away there is nothing that can be said nothing that can be done to change the post circumstances of that event happening. Therefore, part of our forgiveness is learning to live in that new reality that we have become a part of. The new reality of since that event happened. I'll often sit and I will talk to people who are holding grudges and I'll talk to them a little bit about what are some of the things they do whenever they are holding a grudge against someone else. And the things vary between talking poorly about the person, gossiping about them, to walking to the other side of a room if they walk into a room, or completely leaving a place if the other one shows up. And every time I listen to these ideas of things that they do when a grudge is being held, I always ask them the same question. Who is the one that really receives all of the things that we are doing in response to our holding of that grudge? And usually they stop and they reflect and think about it and they realize we are doing all of these things, changing our behaviors, our way our, we speak, everything we do. And that other person who caused all of it, nothing is happening to them. So we think we are punishing them and instead we are punishing ourselves. And so I ask them, is that person, if they have hurt you that badly, are they worth that much extra energy, that much extra worry? And to be honest, do they deserve to have a place in your mind if they have caused you that much pain? Usually the person will stop and they'll reflect and they'll realize, if this person has hurt me this badly, why am I allowing them to have that much control over things that I am doing in my own life? To put it simply, we think the grudge fixes the situation or is the remedy to the problem. Instead, I would challenge the way we go about forgiving and, hold, and allowing the forgiveness to happen willingly is that we learn that we are the ones in control of the situations of our lives. That forgiveness does not mean that I forget that anything happened. Forgiveness does not mean that it reverts back to the way it was before. But forgiveness then allows me to live in a peace that normally I would be losing by holding on to a grudge or to the anger of a situation. So forgiveness then has to do with our ability to find peace. Now on top of that, I think sometimes we find it hard to forgive others because we have trouble forgiving ourselves. You see, when we break forgiveness down and we begin to look and realize that while we are withholding forgiveness from that other person, we are in need of being forgiven and that we are in need of forgiving. I see it so often, especially in regards to the sacrament of confession, that people are not able to let themselves be forgiven. 
And what I mean by that is they'll come and they'll talk to me, whether it's in a counseling setting or in a confessional or whatever it might be. I said, Father, I just can't forgive myself that I did that thing 20 years ago. So, well, did you talk about it in confession? Yes, I did. Did you receive absolution? Yes, I did. So let me understand this. God is willing to forgive you, but you are not willing to forgive yourself. How does that make any more sense? When in reality we go to confession, we recognize our sinfulness because we are realizing that God is the offended party. That our sins have caused pain, have caused hurt to our God. And therefore we come to Him expressing our sorrow for what we have done. And if He is willing to say, I forgive you of that, why are we still holding on and beating ourselves up or carrying around the guilt of those sins? A little bit of guilt is a good thing because it's meant to remind us as we're about to make the same mistake again, you know, this might not be the best thing for me to do. I am still dealing with the grief from the last time I did this. And so a little bit of guilt is okay. But when we beat ourselves up and to make ourselves believe that we are unworthy of our God, unworthy of being forgiven, that is a totally different thing for us to worry about. In fact, we flirt the line with then wondering if we are allowing God to forgive us at all. If you will, blaspheming against the Spirit by saying there is no way that God could ever forgive me of this or not believing that God could ever forgive us of this thing. Who are we to say what God can and cannot do? We do that so often as human beings. We take God and we try to shove Him into the little box of our own understanding, our own thought processes. But God is beyond those things. He is always willing to forgive. And I think it's important for us to recognize why God is willing to forgive because then it can potentially help us with knowing why to forgive someone else. You see, God is willing to forgive us each and every time we come, not because we're that good at begging for God's forgiveness. To be very honest, we don't deserve it. So instead, it is specifically done out of the love that God has for us human beings. Even though we have caused Him pain, we caused His crucifixion through our sinfulness. But beyond that, when we sit before our God in the sacrament of confession, He doesn't simply see the person at that moment who is coming and asking for His forgiveness. Our God exists outside of time, and therefore He sees the entirety of your existence. Therefore, He sees the potential that you carry within yourself. In the church, we say that we are all called to a specific purpose. And that call is that we are all called to become a saint. Now think about that for a second. Would you say you are willing and on the path to become a saint? I've actually used it as a trick question to my parishioners. I'll ask them, how many of them think that they are going to become a saint? No one will ever raise their hands. First off, they're too scared or they don't think well enough of themselves that they think that becoming a saint is possible for them. But then I'll ask them, well, how many of you want to go to heaven? And of course, everybody raises their hand at that point. I want to go. I'd like to go to heaven. And I say the two are not mutually exclusive. The only people who are in heaven are saints. And therefore, we see a view of what God sees of you because He sees each and every one of us as saints. He sees the potential that is inside of us to become a saint. And so because of that, He looks at us and He says, yes, you are a sinful person at this moment. 
but you carry in yourself the ability to become a saint. And so because of that, He will be willing to forgive us, to show us how much we are loved by Him, because He has faith in us. He has faith that in the end, we will achieve the things that we need to do to become a saint. And so when we see the way God is looking at us, then we are called to take that and look at other people in the same way. There's a praise and worship group called Toby Mac, and they have a song in which he says, those who have been forgiven should be quicker to forgive. Because when we realize what we have had taken off of our shoulders, then how can we keep that heavy burden on others? When we are willing to look at that other person, to look beyond what they have done, the circumstances of what they have done, and look at them through the eyes of God and say, even that thing that they did to me, God is willing to forgive them of if they ask. And therefore, I think it also challenges us if God is willing to forgive that person of what they have done. Why are we holding that grudge and withholding a forgiveness? We are not divine. And therefore, if the divine person of God is willing to forgive, how can we not do the same? So I encourage you, take a look at that other person. If you're not quite ready to be in that same room with them, then think about them. Reflect about them. See them as God sees them. Make that your prayer each day as you pray to ask God for the grace and the ability to strive to forgive the wrongs that are done against us in a willing manner. Ask Him for the grace to be able to forgive. Ask Him for the grace to be able to see that other person through His eyes. To reveal to us what He sees when He looks at that person. I remember a conversation I was having with a brother priest. We were going for breakfast at a restaurant after hearing confessions for a first communion class. And he was talking about a parishioner who was driving him crazy. They were coming and complaining and complaining and constantly never seemed to be happy with anything going on around them. And he was finding it very difficult to have love in his heart for that person. And I told him, I said, you know, the thing to remember is God loves that person too. That if God is, that is what God is calling us to do is to love that person. And to think about, you know, if we don't love them, who will? That is the call of the Christian. That is the call of the Catholic. To do the things that no one else in society would be willing to do. To look beyond what the society tells us we are supposed to do. And to look through the eyes of faith. And to see as God sees, to act as God acts. There is a beautiful poem by St. Teresa of Avila who, and I'll try to paraphrase it, I won't use the whole thing, and I don't know if I could quote it, but in the gist of it, it says, God has no hands but yours, no feet but yours. And so if God, and what she is meaning by this, and that's a very short summarization of a much longer poem, what she is saying that is if God is going to act in the world, He uses us. And so when someone is struggling with understanding how someone can forgive, they need to be seeing someone who is willing to forgive. If someone is struggling with an aspect of what it means to be a Christian, they need to see it lived out in the world. There is an old story of one of the Buddhas in the Eastern, Eastern world. He was known for reading the New Testament scriptures on a daily basis. And so someone asked him, why have you never become a Christian? He says, well... If I would have ever met one Christian, I would have converted in a heartbeat. If I would have found one person who was willing to follow the teachings and example of Jesus Christ as He laid them out, 
I would have converted in a heartbeat. You see, that is the true message that Christians are taking out into the world. That there is another way to do things. That just because society says that we should be angry, we should be offended, does not mean we have to be. And we are given that example through our God. That He who has loved us is willing to forgive us. He who we have harmed is willing to forgive simply because we ask for it. The question we have to then ask ourselves, if that is the example that God is willing to give to us, how can we then not do that out in the world? Lastly, I want us to take a moment and reflect on that last word of this particular work of mercy, willingly. I think sometimes we stop and reflect, you know, well, how could someone ever force us to forgive? And I don't think that's quite what it's talking about. Whenever we, I'll go back into our understanding of confession that we've been talking about so much in this talk, that it talks about two different kinds of contrition. Full contrition and partial contrition. Now, full contrition means that we understand exactly the repercussions of what we have done, how they affect our God, and therefore it talks to the sorrow that we feel when we go to confession. We are truly sorry for what we have done, and therefore we have full contrition. The other one, though, is called partial contrition. It's important to note, both of these can allow us to be forgiven in the sacrament of confession. But partial contrition, I would say, can help us understand the idea of how we are called to forgive willingly. See, I explain it this way to my teens in my school or at my church, that whenever we are using partial or incomplete contrition, what it is, is you can imagine two kids, like when you had a brother or a sisters and y'all got into a, into a fight at home. Your brother punched you, so you punched him back. But mom caught you doing it. So she grabs you by the ear and she drags you over to your brother and says, apologize to your brother. Are you going to apologize? Yeah, probably so, because mom's got us by the ear and she's waiting for us to say that apology. In the back of our minds, though, more than likely, we're saying, you know what? They deserved every bit of that. And I'm not really sorry. I'm sorry I got caught more than I am sorry for what I have done. In that idea, we have partial or incomplete contrition. It still allows us to be forgiven in the sacrament of confession. But how often do those circumstances arise in our lives where the only reason we are willing to, to forgive or ask for forgiveness is because we are being coerced to do so. If you are driving down the road and as long as the cop is nowhere in sight, we're willing to drive 75, 80 miles an hour over the speed limit. The cop pulls us over, all of a sudden we are very sorry for what we have done. And we come up with every excuse about why we were over the speed limit except for the real one. We thought we could get away with it because no one was watching. We didn't know the cop was around the corner if we did we would have slowed our vehicle down and drove under the speed limit. The same is in regards to forgiving. When we are forgiving because we are looking and saying, well, maybe someone is watching and I want them to see that I have forgiven that other person. Maybe it is us asking for forgiveness, but we're doing it because we are being told we have to ask. In those ways, we are not truly being willing to forgive. And so we are asked to move more into that understanding of complete contrition, complete sorrow, and that we look at what is going on in the circumstances that we're finding ourselves in, and in the face of those things, we look and we say that I am a better person than that. We look in the face of those things and say that God is asking and expecting more and better of us than we would re than we are acting at that moment. And so as we look and we ask for forgiveness or grant forgiveness, we are called to remember to do so because we are called to do so out of the goodness of our heart. 
not because we are being forced or because we think our God is an angry God who will get us if we don't. We forgive because we have been forgiven first. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Merciful and loving Father, we come to you today struggling with the difficult topic of forgiving other people. Father, in the back of our minds, we know that you have forgiven us, that you have come into our lives, into the messes we have made, that you have not held the grudge against us, have not punished us for our repercussions, but have embraced us, have told us that we are loved, have reminded us that you think more of us. Father, let us begin, give us the eyes to knowledge and see your actions and your forgiveness in our lives. And give us the strength to then be able to be witnesses to that love and forgiveness of God by going out into the world and forgiving others. Let us be your hands and feet that release the chains and the shackles of those who through our own anger and grudges we are holding prisoner. Let us be willing to forgive ourselves. Father, you have forgiven us. Soften our hearts to be able to heal, to allow your healing presence to touch those wounds that our sin has caused, that our faults have done. And allow us to be instruments of your mercy and your love, instruments of your healing to a world sorely in need of seeing another way. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. use media a lot in evangelization, so I believe in the importance of Catholic radio, Catholic TV, Catholics using the new media. Can I encourage everyone to watch Shalom TV? I think it's a great vehicle of evangelization. And God bless all of you.